So the introduction of panel has happened. We are, uh, you know, I'll start with setting up the tone for this webinar, uh, basically talking on what is the marketplace and how it is affecting businesses of going digital. We listen to Larkinda's journey to excellence, followed by the Datamatics Payment Solutions Overview. So let me start and set this tone for the webinar is basically uh, how digital is going mainstream. Through these images I want to you know, um, quote a new study which shows businesses can reap huge gains in productivity by going digital no, more, no matter what industry they are from. Even the most complicated aspects of digital technology like cloud computing and data analytics have reached a point that they are available to every business not just to big ones. Hence uh, with the images what you see here. Digital is mainstream today. What's the importance of going digital? Kodak was, uh, you know, in the headlines and uh, a, a newspaper quoted, they were a company stuck in time and hence they filed for bankruptcy. Kodak's decision to file for bankruptcy protection is a sad though not unexpected milestone for an American corporate icon that pioneered consumer photography and dominated the film market for decades, but ulti uh, ultimately failed to adapt to the digital revolution. Hence going digital is very key for each and every business today. So what is the goal for all companies today? So get the best value through saving of dollars, going green from a less paper to paperless office, running ahead of the competition, globalization or presence in multiple locations, achieving scalability and doing uh, collaboration with various stakeholders across the globe. And the top priority for all the companies today is to have a vision for two years, for three years, for five years. Having a business forecast, you know, to be prepared for the forthcoming challenges as well as opportunities. Shrinking of budgets to maintain uh, the cost optimization level at all functions, uh, building reports and uh, analytics through heaps of data which is uh, you know generated on a day to day basis or there is data which is in history or in uh, or archive data. And last is having digital security which is the priority of each and every company today. Through this I have set the tone for this uh, webinar and now I hand it over to Roger and Laila who will take through their, uh, you know, case study on how automation has helped them with business productivity. Over to you, Roger and Laila. Well, hello everyone. Thank you for allowing us to invade your space for a little while today and uh, share the, uh, the Laquita story that we have uh, today. Um, I'd like to focus on this slide for just a moment. We talked, I, I think it's a very appropriate title, A Journey to Excellence, especially as it relates to the La Quinta story. Um, a journey, I like to use the term journey here because it really is not something that you're going to, you're probably ever going to achieve excellence. Excellence is always evolving and um, the first thing that as it relates to a journey is that you must absolutely understand your processes. Uh, what can you control internally as well uh, and those that are really external to your company? And is there absolutely any new technology that's out there and available that wasn't possibly there a few years back? So you're always constantly looking at what you're doing, always constantly working on making changes and always constantly striving for excellence, but just keep in mind that you may never, it's really not a destination. Okay, I have it, I uh, apologize, but it's showing my screen now, um, I actually, do I need to change it to the presentation or? One minute while we get the presentation up, sorry. Roger, are you able to see the presentation now? Yes, I am able to see the presentation. I just think hey, I need about to, this, yeah. sorry. Just, uh, Roger and Laila, uh, we'll take the control of the screen, so we'll move as for the uh, discussion which you take on. Sure, we can just let you know when we're ready to advance. 
so, of, of course, as it relates to any uh, presentation that we give for La Quinta, we have the obligation to kind of share uh, a little bit about our company. And um, a company that both Lila and myself love to work for It's an absolutely wonderful company. We're very fortunately to be a part of it. So, uh, as you can see, we're about a $900 million uh, revenue company. We're privately held by uh, Blackstone with about 8,000 employees uh, nationwide. Uh, we have some operations in Canada and uh, the uh, in South Central and South America, uh, but they, those are franchise operations. Uh, the franchise side of the house actually makes up about 55 percent of our business, about 475 hotels, uh, and then 360 corporate-owned hotels is the other uh, 45 percent. Um, and really, the AP services that we'll be talking about today are are for the most part, predominantly performed for our corporate properties. We do not handle uh, the AP services for the franchise side of the house. Uh, we absolutely believe in our culture, which in, in, in encompasses people, passion, integrity, excellence, and unique. Uh, and we really are a very unique company. Uh, I will tell you that. We won't be focusing on unique today. We will be focusing on excellence. And when we talk about excellence, we certainly talk about doing our definition of excellence is doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. We constantly challenge uh, the status quo and always, you know, question, you know, is is good the right answer? It's not, obviously, and uh, we're always looking to improve processes. We also talk about is there is there some pain and what can we uh, reasonably do about that pain? And then we also focus on short term uh, versus long term. Short term meaning is there a quick fix that we can put in place, a band-aid if you will, that will make the processes better, or while you're always looking at the long term and what is going to take a little bit more time and resources and obviously uh, capital um, to be put in place down the road. So we absolutely believe in uh, trying to achieve excellence. Again, not probably never going to get there. So uh, our look, uh, if you want to go to the next slide. So our creed, our, our motto, some, one of the things that we constantly say is to make things better, faster, and cheaper. Many organizations have a similar creed or a similar motto, but I can tell you we live this every day. Um, it is, we, you, can't, you can't just make it better and faster. It also has to be a little less expensive, or it has to be, you can't just be a little less expensive and faster and then not have a better product. Um, as it relates to our accounting goals, um, we actually support our corporate goals, and we do that through continuous improvement. You have to, again, as I mentioned earlier, you have to understand your processes, and you must document those processes. You must, in order to achieve anything, you must understand what you are today. Um, we, we focus on value-added activities, you know, and what we question here is are we throwing resources at something that could be outsourced, um, for example. Eliminating unnecessary costs. Do we really need to do this process? Do we actually need to do this? Could somebody else be doing it? Could it be coupled with something somebody else is already doing? And then we evaluate and improve our partnerships. We do this by questioning whether they're actually meeting our needs. Um, you know, our needs are always evolving. They're always changing. Uh, we always want something different or something new comes up. So we evaluate whether or not someone is meeting our, those needs and could they actually meet those needs? Um, do we need to make a change? Sometimes that's, that's you know, the, the reality of it. You have to make a change. And by the way, changes, making those changes is not always a bad thing. An RFP can really allow you to see what else is, is out there. Um, but we do try to strive to, uh, to make sure that we have the right partners in place that will allow us to move forward uh, in the future. Next slide. Yeah, this this is a this is an area that's very near and dear to uh, my heart. It's uh, one of the first departments that I had when I joined La Quinta a little over five years ago, uh, and it's probably the one that's advanced the most over that time. Um, while we are a non-PO based system, that may sound a little uh, middle ages to some of y'all on the call. Um, it is the reality of our business and uh, really the way we operate. Um, we we have a decentralized vendor relationship and uh, invoice submittal and approval process. And really the best way to is to illustrate that 
uh, with, a, with an example. Um, so for example, a general manager in the field, something breaks and they need to get something repaired, so they contract a, a vendor. We have high turnover, so it may not be the same vendor that did the work you know, three months prior uh, for, for another item. So they go out, they contract the vendor, they uh, have the work done, the invoice is uh, provided to the GM, uh, the invoice then gets uh, submitted to our processor where it then um, routes to the person and they, they approve it. it. If it's over that person's approval limit, it then routes to the next, uh, the next level and where it's approved as well. So when we look at our vendor count, we have over 10,000 active vendors in our system. You can understand why we have that many vendors. It's because there's constantly a, a, a churning of those vendors. Uh, in general, our, our terms are 30 days. We have a few exceptions to that. Um, and then the next the next area is really kind of our payment options that we have that we offer today. We currently uh, have paper checks that dominate our business. Um, it's something that's been in place for quite a while. Uh, we uh, we cut you know the majority of our payments are on the checks. Obviously, 68,000 checks per year, representing 360 million dollars in spend. We actually have a P card program. We call it relatively new. It's probably about seven years old that we actually have purchasing cards. So we, we give those to every one of our GMs, uh, general managers in the field, as well as most corporate folks have, uh, have these P cards. And that represents about $16 million in, in spend. And as it relates to continuous improvement, you know, while we implemented this, this card solution a few years ago, we're actually evaluating that card solution and, and, and looking to move it to a, a new level. Um, and then finally, recently this year, just this year, we implemented a virtual MasterCard solution, which Lyle will talk a little bit more about that project in a little bit, uh, where we actually uh, earn rebates by issuing a MasterCard payment via a uh, um, email to our vendors. They sign up to the program, we offer them faster terms for this, and um, we end up, you know, we've, we've already pushed $60 million in spend through this program. So it's been a very successful project that we implemented this year. Um, you can go to the next slide. So things have not always been that great for uh, our accounts payable and, and accounting shop here at La Quinta. Uh, I've been with the company just over five years myself, Lila just over six years. Uh, the actual department was transitioned from San Antonio in 2007. Uh, and with that transition, little personnel came with it. Uh, we, they, they basically, which resulted in an inexperienced staff and no historical knowledge of the company or the processes that were associated with it. In addition, our, our uh, Blackstone owners um, outsourced the accounts payable department, and um, we basically had a 25 headcount accounts payable department. We laid off pretty much all of the headcount, I think with the exception of about five folks, and, uh, and then we outsourced it to a third party. And by the way, that's not Datamatics, <laughs> as we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, what I've learned, we actually contracted with a software provider who then outsourced the processing function, the actual back office uh, workflow uh, routing and um, imaging function. Uh, and the one thing I've learned, the first lesson I learned as it relates to that, is make sure that you have contracts not only with your software providers, but also those that are doing process work for you. And what, what ended up happening, because we lost control of the processing function, it was really through the software provider, um, we had timing and compliance issues. Timing and compliance issues that we could not police, we could not get the processor to do uh, the right thing. And, and overall, we had a lack of visibility to the invoices themselves. So invoices were, were mysteriously lost. I sent this in several days ago. It never got into my queue. Uh, was was uh, pretty much a, um, a, a you know, something that was often stated by our general managers. Um, as a result of this bad implementation, our financials were then impacted uh, downstream areas such as fixed assets and GL. GL is where we actually produce our P&L. Um, they suffered. We would have often invoices that would come into our system that were you know, months uh, later than what they should have. We, we did not have the right answer when we had our P&L meetings and uh, it was really pretty chaotic. As a result of that, we had high turnover during that, the first couple of years that they transitioned up there which uh, added to the lack of knowledge, lack of process. So a lot of folks who went down to San Antonio to, lose those, to, to learn those processes 
when they they had left after two years, it was almost 100% turnover in our department. We lost all that knowledge as well. We had to end up adding headcount, more costs associated with having to combat the issues. And of course, you have the uh, delayed close process. We were over two weeks out before we actually had our close every month. By the way, we're on a um, four-day close today. Uh, so quite a quantum change between where we were probably five years ago. So the question is, how could this have actually been prevented? What, what could have been done? Could, could it have been prevented? Uh, we think we know the answer to that. The answer is yes, it could have been pre prevented. Oh, by the way, our customer service score from our uh, general managers, we were, we were failing miserably. Uh, we actually have a customer service uh, satisfaction rating, and we were, we were at an F level as it relates to overall everybody in accounting, with the exception of payroll, because we were actually paying everybody timely. But uh, the rest of accounting w was getting F. Um, so how could this have prevent, been prevented? Well, I think we have the secret to that, and we're, we're ready. I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Lila, now, and she's going to talk through that a little bit. I want to make one point. It's absolutely critical that an accounting organization, accounting finance organization, has someone such as Lila who actually has a uh, heavy technical background, but also is, an, is a CPA, is an accountant, understands the accounting process. It's, 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 uh, I, I think that it's extremely important to have someone like her that can bridge the gap between your IT department and their methodologies, and IT doesn't understand accounting, and then, of course, the person that like her that understands accounting and kind of talks the technical side of things. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Lila, and she's going to um, walk you through the methodology. And you can go to the next slide. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Roger, for that great introduction of, of my skills here. Um, definitely wanted uh, to talk to you real quickly about how we think or what the recipe for success was for La Quinta. I'm going to try to focus on you know, the AP um, initiatives that we did. We, we've done many changes across the accounting organization to improve the overall processes, you know, business processes process reengineering to help with that four-day close that we're now able to accomplish. But um, because today is about accounts payable and, and how you can automate and make that better, uh, you know, I'm going to focus on that. Um, you know, Roger did go into quite a bit of detail about the challenges that we had. And, and you know, just to clarify again, we, we did already outsource our accounts payable to another vendor uh, back in 2007. And, it's easy for Roger and I today to sit here and tell you that those changes that were made back then were not done properly and planned. It's always, you know, after the fact, you can see the flaws in business process changes. Um, but what we, you know, had to take away from that is what can, what did we observe from that? You know, what can we do to improve going forward and, and not uh, stumble on those same kind of issues again? Um, one of the things that we did notice right away is that we think that the timing of that change was not. Um, obviously opportune. Uh, we think that one of the critical things that we think was missing is that the business processes were not properly reviewed and um, known at the time that those changes were being made. And Roger brought that point out very well that you really should know your business before you try to make a change to it. So, um, you know, on the slide that you have in front of you, I have some you know, quick points on how we think that these projects, uh, the one that we're showcasing today, um, can be better, and we, we have uh, been able to prove they are better by following certain methodologies. In my role here at La Quinta as a liaison between accounting and finance, uh, one of the primary tasks that I have to do is to partner with these two groups and, and help them understand how to be successful when you make a change to your business processes. Um, the first and you know, again, the first thing you, you must do is sit down with the teams, um, talk to them about where the pain points are, uh, even reach out to everyone, every stakeholder involved, reaching out to our general managers, as Roger mentioned, hearing their pain points and, and documenting those and understanding where, what the challenges are, what we need to do to make things uh, better. Uh, once you have that information in hand, it's a little bit easier for you to uh, put together a document that can be used to uh, you know, ask for a request for information from vendors or request for proposals if you decide that you truly want to make a change. Um, but again, it, in order to be able to say, okay, we have a problem, uh, we know where those problems exist today, it's important that you assess that business process first. Um, the other thing that's challenging is, you know, making sure that you devise a plan for implementing such a change. So accounting, 
La Quinta accounting accounts payable was in complete disarray. Uh, we had mentioned that our staff had moved, been changed from five, 25 people down to five people with the outsourcing that occurred. Um, the organization just wasn't ready for that, except with the change of uh, moving the office and all. So again, the, the, the planning of when you actually deploy a change like this is critical. You know, make sure that it is, when you're in an accounting organization, you know you have certain parts of the year that are um, important to you and that you would not want to make a change. So you want to assess that as well. Make sure that you, before you decide to go forward with an initiative such as um, whether it be accounts payable or any other type of change you're going to make, it's your understanding what your business cycles are like and when you should try to deploy a change like this. Resources, again, are key. Um, as Roger mentioned, having a person in a position uh, such as mine is, is very helpful. It doesn't require a specific headcount, but just having someone who has both knowledge of IT and accounting can help bridge those gaps and make sure that you're covering all your bases when you talk about a, a business process changes. Uh, I think one of the, again, one of the things that we find is that getting um, buy-in from the, your stakeholders that a change, I mean, obviously they felt the same. They wanted something changed. But there, anytime you change an accounting application, there is always fear of what's going to happen. You know, will they will they accept it? Will they use it? Um, but getting the stakeholders buy-in and getting a sponsor for the projects that you're trying to deploy are key to success. Um, at, at, La Quinta, you know, once we discovered, you know, with all of the various sources, whether it be the customer service groups, four surveys, you know, the increased headcount, the extended close, we knew there was a problem with the um, accounts payable outsourcing service we had. So we did. We put together a, an RFP. We knew we had to make a change, and so we solicited vendors across, um, you know, the spectrum. Um, and, you know, making sure that you do that RFP process and using the methodologies that uh, most of us are familiar with from a change management perspective are important to ensure you get the right type, type of partner. So, you know, selecting the right vendor is, again, extremely important whenever you're talking about changing uh, from a manual process to a digital process. Um, all of those are, are extremely important to find that right um, vendor or partner. Um, you do that by defining what you think your criteria are. And, and as Roger mentioned, ours, you know, especially from an IT perspective, is to do things better, faster, cheaper. So obviously we're going to put we want reduced costs. We're going to put we want the best user experience from an application standpoint. We want to put that the um, business processes have to be done within a certain SLA. All of those things are key, and they are the, the criteria that we're looking for when we went to look for a vendor for our payable business process outsourcing replacement. So again, uh, you know, deploying an RFP process is key, getting that buy-in from your stakeholders, and getting a sponsor uh, to help you sell the need for this change and why it's important to do the change. Once you have the, um, you know, completed the RFP and gotten your vendor, uh, it's important that you deploy change control methodologies. Um, I'm sure that your organizations have them. Uh, one thing that we see is that a lot of times they're used within the IT organization, but they're not used elsewhere within um, the organization. But using them in accounting and when you're making a business process change is how we have found that we've been successful. Um, they, they really are proven methods. Uh, they make sure that you think about all of the things that could go wrong with a, a change such as this. And what Roger and I, in hindsight, can see that the projects that were done historically, um, you know, were did not follow that methodology as well as they should have, or, or we probably would have not had as many problems as we did. So, analyzing, you know, when you when you actually prepare the uh, methodologies, you know, making sure you set those goals, you know, what you want to do, you want to improve, um, you know, the processing time, you want to reduce SLA compliance issues. Making sure you set goals is, is key um, to ensuring at the end that you have done a good job. Once you've you know, deployed a change to anything, whether it be application or business process, you want to make sure you monitor the results and take corrective action. So um, as, it's no secret, as you may know right now, uh, we did actually select Datamatics as our partner for our accounts payable outsourcing, uh, business process outsourcing. 
um, and their application as well. Roger mentioned that you don't want to select an application provider and then separately select a business process outsourcer. We did select both of them together, and we do think that has been a very valuable success uh, factor with Datamatics that they they have the application on it. Um, they allow you to uh, customize it based on your needs. Um, you know, so it's important that you do find those partners that have the full scope of services available to you. But again, the, the monitoring of, of the, you know, your goals that you set, making sure that they are being achieved, and taking that corrective act is, is key. We still have meetings on a weekly basis today to ensure that we, we do that. We, we want to make sure that going forward we make changes to the application where needed based on feedback we receive. We want to make sure that the SLAs are being um, met and that the Datamatics team is knowledgeable and trained on how to process our invoices and, and you know, making changes wherever needed as that pursuit to excellence that Roger mentioned um, are re continually done. Um, next slide, please. So I'm, you know, kind of talked a little bit about this um, project and implementation with uh, Datamatics. So I'll go into a little bit more of the specifics about the types of additional services that Datamatics was able to provide for us that have truly been value add um, that our other service provider was not doing for us, and that we, as I mentioned, after we sat down and discovered where are our pain points, we these are some of the things that we set as requirements for this change. Um, it, as many of you may know, when you do accounts payable, and especially if you're decentralized, trying to get accurate coding of invoices and expenses is extremely difficult in some uh, organizations. So um, what we decided to do with Datamatics, and they have been able to embrace that very well, is to have them actually pre-code our invoices for us. Um, you know, they receive the images from uh, the invoices from our decentralized um, properties. Um, they actually scan and image them, they review the details of those invoices, and based on criteria and information we provided to them during the implement implementation stage, they're actually able to pre-code those invoices before they're placed into a, a approver's queue for review and approval. Um, again, the primary concern that we had with our previous outsourcer was the processing time. You know, it was taking approximately four days for an invoice to get into the queues of our uh, approvers and um, our goal, uh, whether we selected Datamatics or any other vendor, it, it was to reduce that time significantly. And the reason why we had to do that is because we wanted to make our P&L statements uh, more accurate throughout the month. We wanted to reduce the time of our, our close. So that was another requirement that we had is making sure that we reduce that processing time. Again, I mentioned the customization of the software. Um, if Lakinta is very um, has a strong desire to make our applications branded with our logos and, and make it uh, user-friendly as, as we, LaQuinta, feel our end users need to have it. So having a customizable application is key, and, and Datamatics, as well as other vendors, were able to do that. Um, but again, the customization for us was important. You know, we can help. We were able to help them design an application that made it easy for the, the end users to process their invoices. Very, very important, and, and it's more of um, related to the visibility that we didn't have historically that Roger mentioned as well, that reporting and being able to see where the invoices are within this automated process were important. We were able to do accruals more effectively with by having that information readily available. We were able to analyze our spend uh, more accurately. Um, all of those things were important from a visibility standpoint, and by going from certainly from a paper process into a uh, automated process allows for that. But we went from automation uh, from one to another, but we just didn't have good reporting and visibility before. So that was a key criteria for us, making sure we had good reporting so that we could monitor that. Um, the reporting from a metric standpoint also, you have to be able to assess whether or not your SLAs are being met from a non-functional uh, know, requirement of all of our projects is that we do monitor the, you know, SLAs and how quickly things are being done and how much, you know, of time the systems have. So all of those things are important to be able to accurately monitor, as I mentioned, being a key thing, monitor and, and take corrective active action whenever something's not working. Um, you know, the. The thing that I definitely have to mention is, you know, we talked about that there was historically 25 accounts payable team members. If the 
that count scale was outsourced historically, not with datamatics. So the team went down to five. Because of all the problems that we had, we had to increase the headcount once again to somewhere in the range of 10 over those three or four years of struggle that we mentioned. After the deployment of um, the accounts payable to Datamatics, we were actually able to reduce headcount again. So finding that right vendor, making sure that you deploy things properly, use methodologies that you, um, you know, know are proven for success, has definitely allowed us to do that reduction in staff again, which was anticipated to be the right number initially. Um, but because of the poor, um, I guess, deployment, that we were not able to really achieve those goals of uh, headcount reductions and cost savings until we found the right partner. Um, one of the, you know, again, the, this project for La Quinta, the transition from our current outsource provider of account stable to Datamatics was definitely a showcase project. Um, it definitely met our criteria better, faster, cheaper in all regards. Um, and again, Roger mentioned cheaper is not always the right answer. Um, the better, in this case, was the most important. You know, we did actually uh, take another survey recently after we implemented this project, um, and it was amazing uh, how much the scores had increased. Um, they really did, the field, our 400-plus you know, properties, 350-plus properties, uh, really did view our outsourcer as an extension of our account sale department. They didn't really separate us. We couldn't say, oh, well, that was not us. That was uh, our processor. So whenever they gave us those four scores, um, they really were reflecting on not only the accounting department here at the Irving office, but our outsourcer. So uh, us achieving that uh, improved uh, customer service score was a direct reflection of the vendor that we had selected and the, the process we had gone through to make sure that it was, was a success, um, successful implementation. Next slide, please. So, um, you know, Roger mentioned a few minutes ago about our um, virtual MasterCard program and some of the other things that we've done and we are looking to do in the future. Uh, my point to make there is that without having a successful deployment of our accounts payable invoice processing, some of these other things would not be as achievable as they are today. So one of the key things for us to be able to go to a virtual MasterCard and enroll some of the vendors onto that program, which he mentioned does give us rebates, was we were able to offer our vendors a shorter payment term. Um, so th but we would not have been able to do that five years ago. You know, we were struggling to get our payments made timely because of the amount of time it took to process an invoice. But after the implementation, we were... We, you know, we get invoices in our in queues within uh, less than two days, really closer to one day. And if we chose to, we could make sure we made a payment to vendors within, say, 10 days if that was our choice. Um, obviously, we, we don't necessarily choose to do that always. We want to make sure we have good vendor turns, but um, not to the detriment of our cash flow. So the point being is that with a successful implementation of accounts payable um, outsourcing, that we were able to reduce our terms for our vendors, deploy a new payment method that actually brings rebates into the organization. We're actually transforming accounting from being just a back office processor to being more of a value add to the organization by bringing some um, from a cost center to more of a profit center in, in some ways. Not substantially, obviously, but you know, before, accounting has always been considered uh, just an expense. Well, because of the successes that we've been uh, striving for and working toward, uh, accounts payable is one of those areas we feel like we now are, are able to not just be a cost center anymore, that we actually are value add to the organization. Um, the other thing that's important about finding that right vendor is because, you know, Datamatics in particular has many offerings available to their uh, clients and you know we're able to leverage them. They're able to give us solutions to other problems that we have, um, and and potentially you know deploy some of those. To date, we are still researching and looking at, at uh, where those can help us. Uh, we haven't actually deployed some additional ones, but you know online franchise billing is the one of the things that we're looking towards. We're looking at um, click view dashboard reporting, all these uh, various application changes and business process changes that we do think that potentially Datamatic would be able to partner with us um, to help solve those solutions as well. Um, to close, I just want to reiterate that you know, it, it's key to understand where you're coming from, um, find the right resources to deploy to make sure that you are going to be able to move forward with a successful solution. 
Um, and then finding the right partner uh, to do that with you um, is, is instrumental in being successful. And, and for Roger and I, meeting that goal of ours to uh, journey for excellence. You know, that is one of our primary goals is, to, is excellence. So we're shooting for that, and we will continue to do that with uh, the help of Datamatic. With that, we'll turn it back over to our uh, hosts. And, um, um, thanks, uh, Roger and Lila. Um, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Ram here. Uh, what we thought was since we, for the paucity of time, I will try to take the team through on the next four or five slides and then leave it open for the audience to ask any questions. Is it okay? Okay, um, see, uh, looking at uh, what Roger and Lila said, the, the whole space is always now turning towards digital. Automation is always playing, taking a significant role in every space and in particular in the purchase to pay space as such. And as you automate, there is always a certainty of delivering expected outcomes, speed of benefit, and extending the beyond the operational cost savings. When I talk about operational cost savings, it is not that we are operating in a global environment as such. I think today the model has moved in from an operational cost saving to a functional cost environment and finally which leads to enterprise business outcomes. The model which every provider works on is to ensure that we simplify the process, we standardize the process, we automate the process, use integrated analytics and try to look at the end-to-end -end process improvement and in some situations, we also look at what are those activities which are closely retained by the client and how best we can improve those processes so that those, or those areas also can be outsourced. But today, if you look at the mantra as moved in from operational cost savings to functional cost improvement to the enterprise business outcomes. And uh, in fact, when I say enterprise business outcomes, some of the pointers which I want to really harp here is that how ready are we to integrate? What is that revenue enhancement which we might be able to deliver? What is the cost that we can avoid? And how best we can improve our controls and risks and compliance postures and generate client experience which really leads to a client delight? Of course, the governance driven predictability is something which is very, very critical for a seamless delivery today. And, uh, Moving, and that's what I'm looking at saying that as we really look at automation of the various process like for example a supplier portal, payment management, price compliance or even looking at how best we do the invoice scanning and workflow but as we migrate towards the digital environment the business objectives of reducing costs, increasing controls and compliance and ultimately resulting in optimizing the working capital requirement. That's something which is one of the most important advantage of going digital and more so in an AP process automation piece. And uh, as we automate, if you can see the results are very, very obvious. Today, looking at the market scenario, I think there has been a lot of benefits, be it on the controls and compliance, be it on the visibility, and looking at how best we can capture the early payment discount. I think these data points have been really been delivered to a host of clients across the industry today. I'm um, just... Uh, Moving on to the next slide, and uh, today this, we are going to talk about what is our datamatics procure to pay automation and uh, looking at what are, the, what are the various procure to pay automation suite of tools which datamatics offers. Like for example, if you look at the central portion when we talk about invoice automation, the workflow, how we really work on the discount management part, and uh, Finally, how it will all integrate to the system where we have the suppliers providing the invoices and how the buyers process the orders and using a host of analytics and self-supplier services here. And this is something which we really use for optimizing our process and uh, this has really gone a long mile as far as delivery to some of our external client networks, be it in the domestic space or on the external portfolio market. If you look at this slide, when we talk about the total cost of invoice processing, the tip of the iceberg is something which everybody looks at saying that, are we doing invoice processing? Are we doing the invoicing routing? And how is the payment being handled? But underneath that layer, there is a host of activities that gets really done. And that really has been captured here looking at 
how we do the mail room processing, what is the data entry model, how we really look at scanning and how we look at the record retention and uh, a bit more on how we retrieve the data and how we process the data and what are the various reports which we generate using the purchase to pay portfolio as such. And of course reporting is one area which is going to be very very critical to every operation and that also gets captured but on the top of the world we only talk about whether we have a flow of processing up to the payment part of it. But the host of activities that, that get hidden is almost being done at the back end of the job as such. Next slide. Yeah, I think this is one important slide where we are talking about a suite of tools which Datamatics offers. If you look at it, um, we have captured that into three main um, verticals. If you look at IQ, just want to take a quick minute on what IQ is all about. Most of the data capture happens through our Datamatics tool called IQ where validation of all the documents and then how we really capture those data points, how you validate all this and then we have the EPM tool which is a workflow tool like a file net or, or even a documentum which handles quite a few activities like queue management, how we handle exception handling processes, routings and approvals, archivals and uh, like today if you look at the whole market scenario there might be multiple ERPs but the host of tools which Datamatics offers can wrap around any of those ERPs across so that it will be easy for us to really manage the entire workflow thereby we will be able to really manage the integration of the entire process as such. But today one advantage of the overall EPM is that access is now even gone on the mobile. That, that sort of a improvement in the technology has happened and therefore a complete integrated solution is what Datamatics will be offering to ensure that we have a clear data capture and an exceptional workflow which can wrap around any of those integrated SAPs or the Oracle modules available across the globe. I want to take a quick minute on how analytics has really changed and what is the increasing scope of analytics that has got bundled into the overall finance and accounting portfolio as such. Today we are talking about integrated fragmented process but looking at how analytics has really helped us to bridge the horizontal and the vertical f and processes and what is the business impact in, in terms of decision making support. When I say piecemeal offerings, today the, the model has changed where we are not talking about accounts payable, accounts receivable or general ledger but we are looking at the end to end spectrum of a purchase to pay, order to cash or accounts to report. Therefore this is the model in which we have worked out on the analytics tool and quite a lot of reports that can be generated where we are looking at how data can provide intelligent information. Like for example, the model has is shifted from a data management to a basic reporting to a benchmarking to power analytics. When I say power analytics today, I think we are looking at how best vendor queries can be handled, how the profit leakages can be handled and uh, from the power analytics stage we are looking at how best we can use advanced analytics to capture workflows and look at how the customer segmentation can be really implemented and looking at the collection strategy which can be really used on. Therefore it is a whole repertoire of events that can be used using and then data using the analytics model as such and uh, the whole intent is that we need to ensure that we are able to really manage the reporting part of it in such a way that the clients can really feel delighted overall. And um, a lot of certifications today where we are talking about delivering high quality at all times, sorry. Okay, therefore if you look at the way the certifications are being looked at, in fact uh, for ISO 27001, if you look at the HIPAA which is, which is being really worked on on the health sector as such, we have the SSA 16 compliance which is really needed for some of those third party commercial clients for which for getting listed in the NASDAQ stock exchange and of course a lot of certification requirements pertaining to ISO 9001-2008 and uh, the SCI CMM level 1 or level 3 version 1.3. Therefore the quality certifications which are really important for us to really prove the whole globe that we are completely working towards a very very effective model of delivery. Therefore these are certifications which really add to the authenticity of how delivery happens out of Datamatics as such. One slide which I just skipped is that what is our overall Datamatics FAS offerings. Today 
as I said, we are not talking about piecemeal work like AP, AR and GL. Today we are talking about the portfolios of procure to pay, order to cash, accounts to report and spend analytics using the business analytics model and of course the way the dashboards which are being worked out for the CFOs and the CIOs to really project themselves on how the market is progressing and a lower, the complete suite of offerings which Datamatics has and today looking at the end-to-end -end spectrum there is the concept of measurable, repeatable and predictable delivery. Therefore looking at how FAS offerings are being done by Datamatics today I think we are moving in from a better, faster, or cheaper model to a measurable, repeatable, and a predictable delivery, which will definitely have innovation and value addition. And uh, of course, not to forget that the partnership that is primed to the success of every outsourcing portfolio as such. I think uh, this is what I wanted to really cover in my presentation as such. And uh, thank you. I am open for any questions here. From the listeners, uh, you know, if there are any questions for Roger, Laila, or Ram, we we can take it uh, in this forum currently, or you can uh, revert back on the email invitation, and uh, we can uh, revert back personally to you. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, any questions which come to us, we'll uh, you know we'll definitely make it a point to address it personally and uh, send the response uh, to individuals who have raised it, as well as we'll share these questions and answers with the team, uh, with the attendees, uh, overall attendees who have come for this uh, learning session. I there's one question. Okay, we have a question. So the question is, do you offer any financial reporting tool? Uh, yes, we do offer financial reporting tools. 